Leveling your bed is the cornerstone of creating quality prints. It is a tedious process, one that is often rushed and can be difficult for people with certain physical or other limitations. So why don't we let our firmware just do it for us? That's right, Clipper Firmware offers a built-in routine using a bed probe that will analyze your bed and calculate how much you need to tension each adjustment knob. This turns a 10-minute task into mere seconds and takes us almost virtually out of the equation. Sounds too good to be true? It's not, and we'll go over it today. And here we go. Folks, welcome to the channel. I am Leo of Prince Leo 3D. Thank you so much for joining me on another 3D printing video where today we are going to find out how Clipper firmware can help us level our print bed. What Clipper is going to do is take measurements with a bed probe at the four corners of the bed, and then it will tell us exactly how to rotate each of the adjustment knobs to bring our print bed perfectly or near perfectly in level. And it's doing that with a process called screw tilt adjust. Is that right? It doesn't, it's like confusing, a little weird. Now the naming might not be intuitive. I promise you though, the application of it is. The awkward name is kind of the reason I'm making this video. I think a lot of people might have heard of it, maybe even have seen it, and you sort of shy away because you don't quite know what it does. A lot of 3D printers you may be seeing on the market today require zero bed leveling. Now that's a good thing because bed leveling can be a high barrier to entry for a lot of people. It's not easy, it's tedious, and it can be hard to get it just right but there are still those of us who have 3D printers that require manual bed adjustment. Next to me, I have a Ender 3 Pro. This has gone through a few revisions. It has a dual Z-belted setup from Kevin AKA Sam, quite an old one actually. It has a Clack Ender probe that it's using for a bed probe, and it is running Clipper firmware, which means I have access to the routine that Clipper offers that helps me level the bed with it. Now, before we go any further, I just want to talk very quickly about terminology. The term bed level is really not accurate. What we're really doing referred to as bed tramming. And what we are trying to do when we tram the bed is get the plane of the bed parallel to the plane of the nozzle. This way, wherever the nozzle is on the bed, it should be theoretically equal distance away. Now, of course, there's going to be some warpage in most of these beds, and that's really where a bed probe comes in. And that's the second bone of contention, auto bed leveling as a term. Now you probably have heard of auto bed leveling devices, BL Touch, CR Touch, Euclid Probe, Clack Ender Probe, Inductive Probes, Proximity Probes. All of those are what's considered auto bed levelers. Now that term can be a little confusing because it really doesn't do any adjustment for the bed. What every one of those probes does is gather data. That's all they do. They take probing points around the bed and gather height data. Those data points are turned into a virtual map of the bed. And then while the 3D printer is printing, the nozzle is adjusted along the contours of the map so it stays equal distance from the bed as it's printing those first couple of layers. So I just want everyone to be on the same page with the terms we are using. When I refer to a bed probe in this video, I'm referring to what a lot of people would consider auto bed levels. BL Touch, CR Touch, Clack Ender, Clickies, Euclid Probe, anything that you use to create a bed mesh and print. So bed leveling. I am going to use that term throughout because it's ubiquitous. Everyone does know what I'm talking about. I'm just hoping no one's going to go out, grab a bubble level, and try and level this because that's not the type of leveling we're talking about, of course. In the classical version of bed leveling, we are using some sort of feeler gauge, whether it be an actual feeler gauge that is a specific width or a specific thickness, possibly it's post-it notes, which was my feeler gauge of choice. We place that feeler gauge between the bed and the nozzle, and we attempt to get the feel of that feeler gauge the same at each corner. We, now we have to do this many times. You have to go around your bed several times after you even think you have it perfect. This requires a lot of time and a lot of patience. And for some people, this might not even be possible. And that's why I think Clipper firmware really is helpful for those of us or for those users out there that might have issues with this old classical version of bed leveling, there are users who might have sensory issues in their hands or grip issues in their hands. If you're suffering from neuropathy or some other sensory issue, 
feeling tension on a feeler gauge may be virtually impossible for you. And that makes bed leveling an already arduous task, something even more difficult. But Clipper firmware has some advancements for us that are gonna aid us in bed leveling and make this arduous, tedious, tiresome process so simple. Besides having Clipper firmware on your 3D printer, this process is also going to require that you have a bed probe, and it can be any of the bed probes I delineated earlier in the video, BL Touch, CR Touch, Clack Ender, Euclid Probe, any sort of bed probe. Now for this to work, you do need to have your bed probe set up properly. Now I have two different videos that go over that. One is a short one minute video, and then one is a longer video that shows you all the different steps of getting your bed probe up to snuff. And you'll also need a set of calipers. We need to measure the width of the screw that's actually used for the adjustment knobs. Those are the only two additional things besides, of course, installing Clipper firmware on your 3D printer. But don't worry, you already have Clipper on your printer, right? Because it's awesome and it does so many different things besides helping us level our bed. Let's get to it. We're gonna jump on our front end and we're gonna learn how to set up screw tilt adjust in Clipper to help us level our bed. I am now on the front end of my 3D printer and for today's demonstration, I am using Fluid. The first thing we are going to want to do is find out what the location of the bed screws are on our 3D printer. And we're doing that relative to the probe tip. Whatever probe you are using, CR Touch, BL Touch, Clicky Probe, or the Clack Ender like I'm using here, you want to make sure the probe tip, and that is the point at which the probe meets the bed, is directly overhead or in line with the adjustment screw. In order to do that, we're going to use this tool section and move our hot end and the probe around the bed over each screw and we're gonna note its location. Now in order to unlock this section and move our hot end around, we first must home all our axes. My axes are homed and I can now move my print head around the bed and get the position of my adjustment screws. I'll start with that front left screw. I begin positioning my hot end around the bed right until my probe is over the middle of that screw. First, we're gonna line up the left to right section of our probe, that's of course the X axis, and then once we get that just right, move around to the side of your 3D printer and now adjust the front to back location. You wanna make sure that probe is also above the screw on the Y axis. And for me, at X is 25, Y is 7, my bed probe is directly in line with the adjustment knob, and that is the coordinates I'm going to use for screw number one. We will now move to screw two. Now, because they are along the same front to back plane, the Y axis will be the same, and the Y coordinate will be the same. So we can now just move this over across the X axis. And again, once you are happy with the probe's positioning, it's directly above the adjustment screw. Note the location here. For me, it was X195, Y7. Now, it's usually at this point that many users run into a problem. And it's usually that their probe is mounted in such a way that the hot end cannot move far enough over to get the probe tip directly over the adjustment knob. All you need to do is get the probe as close to the center of the adjustment knob as possible. So get it as close as you can and use those coordinates. After the second screw, we are gonna move back to the third screw. Now, of course, we are going to keep the same X coordinate because we're not moving the left to right anymore. We're only moving front to back. So we'll begin to move the Y axis back. For me, at X195, Y178, the probe was directly over the adjustment screw. That's what I noted down, and that was the location for screw number three. We can now move on to the remaining screw, the left rear screw, and at this point, you may realize that we really don't need to. The front two screws are going to have the same Y coordinate. Screw two and three are gonna have the same X coordinate. Screw three and four are gonna have the same Y coordinate, and that means screw one and four will also have the same X coordinate. So we can now extrapolate what it's going to be based on that. And for me, it is X25, Y178. Now, of course, you're gonna to wanna to bring your hot end there just to make sure it does sync up, but it should be spot on for you. That is the bulk of the work we're gonna do for this macro. After we've done this once, we will not need to do it again unless we move our bed probe in some way. 
We now have the coordinates of every adjustable knob where our bed probe sits above it. We now need to fill that in somewhere. That means we need to copy the screws tilt adjust template and then add it to our printer configuration. Now for that, you can look in the description of this video. You can go to my website or you can even go to the Clipper documentation. As you can see, it is a very simple set of text commands. It's the location of the screws that we just got as well as some speed and some thread requirements. I'm gonna go on the official Clipper website, copy that from there, then move back to my front end. From here, I'm gonna go into my configuration file, and then I'm gonna go into my printer.cfg. That's where I need to add this. Once inside my printer.cfg, I'm going to find some room, and I'm gonna paste in the command that I just copied. Now, if you're copying it from the Clipper website, you're gonna to wanna to erase these periods. I'm not sure why they're there. Now, let's take a look at this macro. Starting from the top, screw one. That is the front left screw. How do I know that? Well, the line under it, screw one name, front left screw. Under that is screw two, and it is the front right screw. Beneath that, screw three, and that's the rear right screw. And then finally, screw four, and that's the rear left screw. On each of these lines is also the coordinates, and those are gonna be the coordinates that we measured in the previous step. Now, let's take the coordinates we gathered for each bed screw and add it to the macro. Horizontal move Z. 10 is default and it is perfectly acceptable. And then speed, default is 50. I usually run it at 250, but that's based on whatever your printer can handle. Below that is screw thread, and this is sort of an important one. CW stands for clockwise. We also have the option to make it CCW, counterclockwise. Which one should you use? Whichever direction decreases the gap between the nozzle and the bed is the direction you're going to use here. 99% of the 3D printers available will be clockwise. That means if you were to turn the adjustment knob clockwise, it would loosen the tension on the spring, your bed would rise towards your nozzle, and that would decrease the gap. That is the majority of cases, and you'll want to leave this as CW. If for some reason a counterclockwise movement decreases the gap between your bed and your nozzle, then you're going to want to write CCW. M3, that is the metric size of the screw that's being used. The common sizes are M3 and M4. In order to find which metric screw you are using, we're gonna use our calipers. Take your set of calipers and measure the width of the screw. Do this a few times, do it at a few different angles, make sure you get it right. A screw width of three millimeters is an M3, four millimeters is an M4, and five millimeters is an M5. Very likely you're going to come near one of those, 2.97, 3.98, round up, 2.97 becomes 3, 3.98 becomes M4. After you have measured with your calipers, you are then going to insert it here. I measured a width of four millimeters, so I'm gonna make this an M4. Now that is all we need to fill out for this macro to work. Once you're finished filling this out, make sure to save and restart the firmware so all of these changes take effect. Before we begin the calibration, I just want to talk about getting your adjustment knobs to the correct tension. After calibration, we're going to be asked to adjust these knobs, and if they're too loose or too tight, you won't be able to make enough adjustment in any one direction. I always recommend tensioning these to about 60% tension, which will put compression on the springs, but still allow you to loosen or tighten them as needed. Before running screws tilt adjust, I ran a bed mesh. This way we can see the difference in mesh quality before and after a proper bed level. You can see here how gnarly this bed is being visualized. And in fact, there is a bed tolerance of over one millimeter, which means the delta between its lowest probed point and highest probe point is over one millimeter in length. Now let's run our calibration and see if we can improve upon this mesh with a correctly leveled bed. We are on the home page of our front end, and again, we're going to be working almost entirely in the tool section of this menu. At the top of this section is a drop down, and when we select it, a number of routines we can run are shown to us. Currently, they are all grayed out and unselectable, and that's because we first need to home all our axes before we can use them. So we start this calibration by first homing all our axes. Now we can select the tool drop down again, and all the options are available to us. And like you may have guessed today, we will be using the screw tilt calculate routine. And when you select that, the calibration begins. The probe now takes two readings from each of the four corners where we gave it those coordinates. And then it will do some math and tell us just how to rotate our adjustment knobs to bring the bed into level. All of this information will be given within the console menu, which is also on the homepage. But to make it easier for us to see, I'm going to go to the dedicated console page 
of our front end, which will make this full screen. Here is what the output of screws tilt adjust looks like. The first two lines show the coordinates and the probing measurements for screw one. Under that is screw two, then screw three, and finally screw four. Below that, Clipper gives you a brief description and example of how you should manipulate the adjustment knobs for the purpose of this calibration. Clipper uses a standard clock as a reference point for degrees of rotation, and that's in hours and minutes, and direction of rotation, and that's in clockwise and counterclockwise. A clock face has a full rotation of 60 degrees, one minute per degree. So one hour, which is equivalent to 60 minutes, would equal one full rotation. In the given example, Clipper gives you a time of one hour and 20 minutes which means we need to spin the adjustment knob one full rotation for the hour plus 20 minutes or 20 degrees. The 20 minutes would be 20 degrees of the full 60, so it will be just above a quarter turn. Just as important as the amount of rotation is the direction, and Clipper also provides that with CW for clockwise and CCW for counterclockwise. It is very important to note the direction and spin the knobs accordingly. Now we see the adjustment amounts that Clipper computed for us, taking into account all the above probing information. Starting at the top is an important note, and that is screw number one, the left front screw, will never be adjusted. It is the base measurement for which all the remaining screws will be calibrated towards. So if you find yourself spinning the knob for screw one, stop, you are not supposed to be doing that. Screw two will be the first position where there will be any adjustment information. And here it shows a counterclockwise adjustment of 44 minutes. And for simplicity, I would think of this as 45 minutes, which is three quarters of a full turn in the counterclockwise direction. When making these adjustments, it can be hard to keep track of anything over 30 minutes. It may help to add a marking like a dash of whiteout or a piece of tape onto the knobs so you can better tell how far they've traveled. Screw three, the back right screw, shows a counterclockwise adjustment of 55 minutes, which is five minutes shy of a full rotation. Lastly, screw four shows a clockwise adjustment of one minute, which basically means we don't need to adjust it at all. After all the adjustments are made, we head back to the home screen, find the tools drop down menu again, and run screws tilt calculate another time. This time the results are spectacular. Remember, screw number one is our base screw, and we won't make any adjustments to it. Screw two shows a clockwise adjustment of three minutes, Screw three shows a clockwise adjustment of six minutes, and screw four shows a clockwise adjustment of four minutes. Screw four is showing a larger adjustment than last time, but there's nothing abnormal about that. When adjusting any one corner of the bed, it will directly affect the corner that is diagonally across from it. Seeing these adjustment numbers float around a little between calibrations is completely normal. These adjustments are all very low, but how do we know when we should stop calibrating? Well, the guideline clipper sets when to finish calibration is that any screw that is under six minutes of adjustment will not need to be adjusted further. Screw two and four are both under six minutes while screw three is exactly six minutes. It's up to you if at this point you want to adjust and then rerun screws tilt calculate again. Calibrating it one more time can't hurt. This process is going to be your general workflow. Run the calibration, make the adjustments, rerun the calibration, and see what those adjustments have done. Each time there should be less and less need to make adjustments to each screw until finally we have our bed screws all under six minutes of adjustment. After finishing with screws tilt adjust, I ran another bed mesh. This way we could compare the before and after results of how the bed was being visualized. You can see it turned out so much better than our original unleveled bed. Initially, the tolerance was over one millimeter and now it's around 0.3 millimeters, which just goes to show you how effective screws tilt adjust can be for you. After you are done with this calibration, you aren't quite finished. You still have to make sure to readjust your Z offset, and that is done through the routine probe 
calibrate. If you are unfamiliar with this, you can find exactly how this and other BL Touch operations work in my BL Touch Clipper video, which I've mentioned a few times in this video already, and there will be a link in the description. For me, this clipper routine has worked wonders. I've used it on all my printers that require bed leveling, and every time, it's always been a success. Now, I note there are people on the Discord who I've spoken to in the past who have used this, and it hasn't always worked as well as it has for me. It's been a little touch and go for some people. Now, if that happens for you, I would just make sure, go through the process of screw tilt adjust. Again, take it step by step. Make sure you have everything set up properly. After that, make sure your bed probe is calibrated properly. And most important is the X and Y offset because that's what Clipper is basing the coordinates of the probe on for all of its movements. So if you are having issues where screw tilt adjust isn't quite working out for you, I would look into the bed probe and make sure it's set up. If you have any questions, ask them in the comments below. You can join the Discord, you can ask them there, or you can just sit back, watch the conversations that take place. You will glean a ton of knowledge just by being there and seeing what people are talking about, showing off what they're printing, and then seeing what else they are exploring in the 3D printing world. I have more Clipper videos installed. As newer printers are coming out, more of them are coming pre-installed with Clipper, which is awesome. I have a few unboxings and reviews coming up, more Clipper stuff. We're going to talk about Opto Everywhere very shortly, which is a way to remotely access your 3D printer. You can start prints, you can stop prints, you can monitor it. It's really awesome. You can even share your front end, your 3D printer with other people, which is going to help us diagnose 3D printing issues in the community. So I'm really happy with the features that are offered with Octo Everywhere, and I can't wait to dive in a little further and then eventually share that with all of you. I have a Patreon now. If you want to join to say thank you, I appreciate that. There's a link in the description. And to all my current Patreons, I say thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And now, as always, until next time, boys, girls, everybody else, keep on printing. It doesn't really make sense, huh? Not super intuitive.